Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A Michigan teenager got caught up in a scam and took his own life. Tonight, his family one step closer to some sense of justice. Thanks for being here with us for the News at 6. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skillian. It has been two years since Jordan DeMay was tricked into sending compromising photos of himself over Instagram. Then came the demands for money and Jordan eventually taking his own life. After that tragedy in Marquette, federal agents quickly tracked the suspects to Lagos, Nigeria, extraditing them to Michigan. They initially entered a plea of not guilty, but today that changed. Pam Osborne, live with new developments. Pam. Kimberly and Devin, there were no statements, no apologies, but in court today, the two brothers who authorities say targeted Jordan from a world away pled guilty. I spoke with Jordan's mom about that guilty plea and the message she hopes it sends. Lots of emotions with that. Um, you know, watching my other children grow up, they... They have characteristics of Jordan that remind me of him all the time. Two years after Jordan DeMay died, his family is a little closer to closure. What I didn't know is how it would make me feel emotionally, hear them say the words guilty and, um, you know, face that charge. 22-year-old Samuel and 20-year-old Samson Ogoshi entered a guilty plea in federal court today for the sexual exploitation of children. I hope that from what happened today, it truly sends a message to people who are engaging in this type of behavior online that it doesn't matter where you are, you can be caught and held accountable for doing this activity online to our children. According to investigators, the brothers who were extradited from Nigeria last August posed as a teenage girl online, trying to convince boys to send naked pictures. Once they got the pictures, prosecutors say they would extort the victims for money. Demay, a 17-year-old high schooler from Marquette, was targeted by the international sextortion ring the Ogoshis took part in. The brothers threatened to send DeMay's nude to all of his social media followers, family, and friends. He died by suicide under the pressure. I think that in sharing Jordan's story and talking about him as a person, that kids and parents can relate personally to him. And the more children and parents that we reach, we can prevent this from happening. It's giving parents the tools and the knowledge um, to know what happens with this type of online activity and how to handle it. The FBI says financial sextortion is on the rise. They agree with Jennifer. You have to be having open and honest conversations with your loved ones about this topic. And they say if you believe you or anyone that you know may be a victim of this, call the FBI at 1-800-CALL-FBI. They can help you out there. Now, as for these two brothers, they face anywhere from 10, 15 to 30 years behind bars. A date has not yet been set for sentencing, and there is a third person who is awaiting extradition to the United States. Reporting live tonight, I'm Pamela Osborne. Local but four. great to hear Jordan's parents feel they are a little closer to some sense of justice in just an awful, awful case. Pamela, we appreciate your report this evening. And you may remember I sat down with Jordan's parents for an extended conversation last year about their son and what they want all parents to take away from this story. We'll be streaming that again tonight at 8 for you on Local 4 Plus. So please join us for Sextortion. The Jordan DeMay story. Such an important and great conversation. Then we urge you to watch. A triple shooting in Pontiac left a man dead and left people living near the crime scene wondering where to find safety. It happened at the North Hill Farms Apartments near Dixie Highway and Telegraph. Neighbors there tell our Victor Williams they've seen way too many of these violent incidents and they are saying now enough is enough. Yeah, well, we hate to be right here in this neighborhood telling you about someone who was shot and killed along with two others that were injured. But then we thought about the people living here who say they have to deal with this on a regular basis. And it gets even worse when you go into summer, but it is very common. Stacy Gilo and Joe Butler Jr. are two people who have lived in the North Hill Farms apartment complex for over a decade. Both are fed up with shootings that happen on the regular. The latest left a 24-year-old dead and two other men in their 20s injured. I'm in the middle of it. It's happening in front of my apartment. It's happening behind my apartment. 
can take a look at the side of my car. There's 440 cales in the side of my car. You step out my door, you can see bullet holes in the buildings. It's kind of disheartening that you got to go through this every other week or every other day, night, holidays, whatever. Surveillance video caught sound of the gunfire erupting around 1226 this morning. The cause of the dispute that ultimately turned out to be deadly unknown at this time, but this is nothing new for either resident who have been away become desensitized to all the shootings taking place. Business as usual, you know, as long as I wasn't involved in it, I just stay out of the way. Two homicides have been reported in the complex in 2023, and just three days ago on April the 7th, another person was injured after being shot. It's just the most sad thing. A lot of these guys are young. I feel bad for our security. How would you like to work security someplace like that where, you know, you're supposed to observe, but you're risking your life. Now we're told that this may be the aftermath of a party going down right in the very parking lot of that complex. But once again, this is still a very open investigation. If you watching know anything, then the Oakland County Sheriff's Department would like to hear from you. Victor Williams, Local 4. All right, Victor. A new case of measles has been detected in Metro Detroit. The health department is confirming a four-year-old is infected. There's a possibility of exposure in three locations, the Acadian Urgent Care on Springwells in Detroit, the Wright Health Pharmacy on West Verner, and the Children's Hospital of Michigan Emergency Room in Detroit. About one in five people who get measles will be hospitalized. So far, no other measles cases have been associated with this incident. We showed you yesterday the new Hollywood-style Detroit sign being built along I-94 in southwest Detroit, part of the welcome for visitors coming for the NFL draft a couple of weeks away. But apparently the finished sign is not what a lot of people had in mind. Sean Lay, live with the reason for the mixed reviews. Uh, there was also some misinformation out there, Sean. We'll get to all of that. First and foremost, what a joy to be out here all day long. There's been a party out here. People flocking here to take pictures of the sign. This family from Nicaragua. Mom here can see the sign from her kitchen window. Fills her with such pride because in Nicaragua, there's signs like this for every single little town. So it fills her with such nostalgia. Now, yes, go online. Look at the critiques for this. It's just what we do in Detroit. People are absolutely brutal. But you come here and there is an absolute celebration. Let me show you. What do you think of it? I think it's amazing. I love it. It went up yesterday and today has already become a destination location. I walked up in here. I live here in the neighborhood and we're very proud. The city of Detroit's 400,000 gateway sign, known as Detroit's Hollywood sign, here along I-94. This sign is making a splash. Can someone say, follow me? Field trip? Long breath, long we, we had to do it. One of the kids said I drove by it this morning. I said, is it cool? She's like, yeah. You like it? Yeah. There's a lot of love for the sign online. There's a lot of hate. They want Hollywood, so, you know, I got over a thousand videos into this song, so. I was like, dang, you're probably not going to see when you want to play. All I want to know, how much we pay for the And Detroit MC legend GMAC Cash had to whip up a song about it overnight. Oh, yeah. So I said, I thought this sign was going to look like Hollywood. Real taught us why Barbie put it in the hood. The online hate comes from an Instagram post of a mock-up of a Detroit sign that clearly states not actual photo. Some people thought this is what they were getting. My first time I see it. Look. Okay, what do you think? Now we're up to close. Uh, it's not that bad. Right. If we make it, but yeah. with the Lions winning, the Tigers playing Visa right now, we, we were expecting a bigger sign. What do you make of online comments of people just dogging it out? Oh, God. Come see it for yourself. That's what you do. Oh, that's the point right there. Come see it for yourself. Look at a picture online of this actual sign. You might shrug your shoulders and say, that's it. Come here. It grows on you. The green reminds me of the spirit. Okay, kids, one more picture here. It's been a party out here. So much fun. So much pride in Southwest Detroit saying, okay, for the draft. But they put this in our neighborhood, and we absolutely love it. Guys, also, if the Hollywood sign in the mock-up that we saw was just a mock-up, it was just something uh, to talk about. That would divert air traffic. It would block off half of this neighborhood. It would shine lights in the other half. It's just, that would not happen. The other thing is, guys, I'm just going to say this right now. GMAC Cash is a Detroit treasure. His distinct voice is what everyone is thinking, and it's absolutely brilliant. I just love it, guys. Back to you. <laughs>
Diverting air traffic. I, I had not considered the right, problems. Right. That's right. Yeah. Would you? Do, I mean, that's not going to happen. Uh, that's uh, like, uh, it's bigger than the Ren right, right. This is the sign. Uh, uh, yeah, I, love it. I love it that you said, "Come on out," because uh, it'll grow on you once it. you see it. That's, that's great, right. Sean. We appreciate it. She's great. That's right. That's right. All right. All right, well, the drawn-out battle between American consumers and higher prices shows no signs of ending soon. New numbers out today show prices rose again in March, mostly due to two key areas affecting consumers most. U.S. consumers continue to feel the squeeze of higher prices for essentials like gas and shelter. The Bureau of Labor Statistics said Wednesday the consumer price index increased at a year-over-year -year rate of 3.5% in March. That's the highest annual gain in the last six months. This has definitely been a setback. This is not good news. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the Fed or anyone else should give up the fight against inflation. Overall, grocery prices stayed flat month to month, but they're up 1.2 percent from a year ago. I think uh, consumers continue to feel the pinch. I think consumers continue to compare prices to sort of pre-COVID or two or three years ago. Purdue University professor of agricultural economics, Joe Balagtis, says that comparison, in addition to increased costs in other areas, could shade how consumers feel about their grocery tabs. The things that we pay for outside of the grocery store also affect the money we have left to spend on groceries, right? So if we have to spend more on gasoline, um, uh, if our auto insurance uh, becomes more expensive if our housing becomes more expensive. And the cost of auto insurance was up 2.6 percent last month, up a whopping 22 percent from one year ago. Gasoline prices ticked up 1.7 percent from February to March. In Metro Detroit right now, we're paying 3.55 a gallon, seven cents higher than last month, but about three cents less than a year ago. Let's take a look at the weather picture here. A little cooler than mm -hmm. it was uh, yesterday at this time. Been a pretty nice day, yeah. but change is coming. We saw quite a bit of sunshine, too. Let's yep. get over to Kim Adams in the forecast. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. Well, already the clouds have started to move in. We had the high, thin clouds, and now we're getting the mid-level and even low-level clouds. So it's becoming a little gray here in Metro Detroit, and we won't see the sun again, at least the way we did today and yesterday, until the start of the weekend. 65 in Detroit, mid-60s in Howell, 64 in Pontiac, and 63 in Adrian. It's only in the low 50s in Grosseal and mid-50s in Monroe, but 60s everywhere else across Metro Detroit. Here are those clouds that have already moved into place and they're going to stick around for a while. But as we widen out the view, you can see the showers moving up from the south, just about to cross that Ohio border. And they will be in our backyard here in Metro Detroit uh, over the next several hours. The bulk of it, the, the really heavy rain won't arrive until after midnight tonight. And it's going to stick around a while tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow afternoon and evening, even some showers and thunderstorms, as much as an inch or two of rain will fall in the next 48 hours. We'll tell you how much it will affect the weekend coming up.